It's been just over two years since the Iran nuclear agreement was signed under the Obama administration. But President Trump may very well be on the way toward pulling the United States out of the deal. John Yang has that. Candidate Donald Trump ran against the agreement, but President Trump has twice followed the State Department's advice and certified that Iran is complying with it. But now, in a Wall Street Journal interview published today, Mr. Trump indicates he's willing to overrule the State Department when the next certification is due in October. We've given them the benefit of every doubt, but we're doing very detailed studies. And uh, personally, I have great respect for my people. If it was up to me, I would have had a non-compliant 180 days ago. Do you expect them to be declared non-compliant next time? Personally, I do. What would it mean if Mr. Trump said Iran is not complying? What's at stake here? We get two views. First, Rob Malley is here in the studio as special assistant to President Barack Obama. He was the lead senior White House negotiator for the agreement. He's now a vice president of the International Crisis Group. And joining us from Toronto is Mark Dubowitz. He's chief executive of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies, a Washington, uh, D.C.-based think tank. He's been advising the Trump administration on Iran policy. Rob, let me start with you. What's your response to, uh, to what the president said? I should also point out that in that interview, he went on to say that he thinks Iran is taking advantage of this country. He, he said they've taken advantage of a president named Barack Obama who didn't know what the hell he was doing. Okay, I, I won't respond to that, but let's, let's get the facts straight. We have now, since President Trump has been in office, twice uh, they, they, the administration certified that, that uh, Iran was in compliance uh, with the deal. Twice the administration waived the sanctions, which is a, a way of indicating that it's a re uh, mutually reciprocal. This is, this is a, the administration's response to the fact that Iran is doing its share, we do our share. Twice, the agency, the international agency that's responsible for deciding whether the sides are in compliance, whether Iran is in compliance with its nuclear restrictions, the International uh, Atomic Energy Agency, twice since President Trump has been in office, it has said that Iran is living up to its deal. And twice, the Joint Commission, which is the commission formed by all of the members, countries that negotiated the deal, including the United States, twice, including recently, they have said that Iran is in compliance. So maybe the president has information that he hasn't shared with anyone else. But at this point, it's clear that for almost every objective observer, every objective observer, the subjective observers may have the other view, but every objective obse observer has said Iran is in compliance. So I don't know where he comes up with saying that he knows, but others don't know, even his cabinet disagrees apparently, but he knows that Iran is not in compliance. So that would really be breaking our own obligations under the deal, but also breaking with our allies, which would put us in a very difficult position. Mark Dubowitz, you are ad advising the administration. Obviously, I presume you wouldn't want to talk about that advice, make that advice public. But what uh, uh, is what should the president do? What do you think the president should do uh, when this next certification comes up? So the president should make it very clear that Iran is not in compliance with the deal. Um, it's been very clear in the Secretary Tillerson's letter to Congress, again, made it very clear that there are incremental violations of the deal. The president actually didn't certify that Iran is in full compliance with the deal. He, he merely said that Iran meets certain conditions that were laid by Congress, which didn't require full compliance. So my advice to the president would be state the facts, which is Iran is incrementally violating the deal. But unless there's a material breach of the JCPOA, the nuclear deal, don't go to the Joint Commission, don't snap back the UN sanctions, but use that noncompliance as a predicate to roll out a much more comprehensive Iran policy that deals with all forms of Iranian malign behavior, not only nuclear misbehavior, but Iran's malign behavior across multiple fronts. That's a full comprehensive policy, and it, it gets us away from this myopic focus on the nuclear deal, which I think paralyzed U.S.-Iran policy under President Obama. Rob Malley, myopic focus on the nuclear deal, and, and or should there be consideration of things across a, a broader consideration, as as, as he says? There, there should, there has been, and there'll continue to be. I mean, what what the Obama administration, what President Obama did, was take one issue, which was a critical issue, not only our national security experts, but Israeli and other experts said, if Iran were to rush to a bomb, we would be in a very difficult situation. Let's look at the case of North Korea. We wouldn't want to see a North Korea on the Persian, in the Persian Gulf. So we have a, that was a priority at that point, was not to give up on the other issues. Let's at least make sure that Iran is not in a position to get a bomb. At the same time, let's push back on their regional activities, let's see what we can do about their ballistic missiles, but the deal itself, and 
deliberately was about this issue. It wasn't a, a case of myopia. It was a case of we're going to deal with this issue. We solved it, at least for the time being. And let's work on the other issues at the same time. There's nothing in the nuclear deal that would prevent us from taking action against Iran if it engaged in terrorism, uh, ballistic missiles, human rights violations. The question at the heart of what the president said is whether we are going to continue to honor our part of the deal to make sure that Iran also honors its part and doesn't rush to nuclear bombs so that we don't have what we have now in, in, in North Korea. In North Korea, we have a country that has a nuclear bomb, and we have no visibility on what they're doing. In Iran, we have a country that doesn't have a nuclear bomb, and we have almost maximum visibility as a result of the deal in every aspect of their nuclear program. Mark Tubowitz, what about that? The, the idea that it's better to know what's going on, to, to, to work within this agreement and know what Iran's doing. Look, I'm glad Rob brought up the uh, fatally flawed North Korea nuclear agreement because the Iran nuclear agreement is similarly fatally flawed. It contains within it sunset provisions where the restrictions on Iran's nuclear program actually go away over time. And Iran can emerge by actually faithfully complying with the deal with an industrial sized nuclear program with near zero nuclear breakout capability, with a much easier covert sneak out capability, with an ICBM, with a powerful economy fortified against our ability to use sanctions and with increased regional hegemony. So, so Rob is right. The deal temporarily pushed the Iranians further in terms of breakout. But over the medium term, Iran is going to emerge with everything at once by faithfully complying with the deal. So we don't want another fatally flawed nuclear agreement like we had with North Korea. What we need to start dealing with is this flawed agreement. And I think the president has already made it very clear that he thinks this is a terrible deal. He thinks it's a fatally flawed deal. And I think my advice to him is don't certify compliance and begin to lay the predicate for a massive pressure campaign and get the Iranians back to the table to negotiate a nuclear deal number two that addresses some of these fatally flaw flawed elements of the deal. And by the way, gives us inspection rights into military sites, which right now we have in theory, but in practice, the Iranians are not letting us into their military sites where they're likely to engage in nuclear weaponization activities like they have in the past. So we better rectify this fatally flawed deal or the Iranians are going to get a nuke, ICBMs, and they're going to have the ability to dominate the region like nothing we've seen before. Rob Malley, what would be the consequences? What's at stake here? What would be the consequences if the president did say Iran is not living up to this deal? Well, first, I have to say, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about the argument that, that, that Mark was making. Uh, is the argument that the deal is fatally flawed and therefore we, should, we shouldn't accept it, we should walk away, we should renegotiate it, which would be one path, very dangerous, and I would get into that. Or is his view, the deal is okay for now, but there's a, over in 12, 13, 14, 15 years, there's some provisions that are going to expire, and so we should think of whether we can negotiate what happens afterwards. But in which case, we're going to have to give something to Iranians in return. Nobody's going to, the Iranians are not going to accept to negotiate more restrictions in exchange for nothing. So I think we need to clarify. Right now, we're in a much better position than we were uh, at the time President Obama took office because we have these restrictions. And according to every uh, inspection that has been done, every report by the IAEA, Iran is in compliance. Now, if tomorrow the president were to decide to announce that Iran is not in compliance, first of all, I think we would have a little bit of a déjà vu in terms of, of Iraq. I think most people in the international community would believe that we're just fabricating evidence because we haven't shared it, because right now we're the only ones who are claiming that Iran is not in or we would be the only ones uh, claiming that. That would not put us in a strong position. If you were to do that and that's it and continue to honor the deal, it would be a hiccup. It would once again signal to the world that we have a rather erratic administration. If he were then to impose sanctions, to reimpose the sanctions that were lifted, reimpose sanctions on Iran's nuclear program, then we would be in breach. And either the, the, Iran would itself say we're no longer uh, bound by, the, by, by our own commitments and we would have a possibility of Iran trying to acquire a nuclear bomb, or we'd be isolated in the international community because the Europeans, the Russians, the Chinese, everyone would say it's on you, it's not on Iran. Why would we want that? Mark Dubowitz, let me, I want you to respond. What, what would happen, what practically would happen if the president said they weren't uh, complying, and then what should the next step be? Well, actually, practically speaking, what Rob's not telling you is that if the president says they're not complying, but he doesn't say that they're in material breach, then actually nothing happens then we don't go to the Joint Commission. We don't snap back UN and US sanctions. We merely say Iran is engaging in incremental violations. And we know that the Iranians violate incrementally, not egregiously, even though over time, the sum total of their incremental violations is always egregious. 
What Rob's not telling you is that he knows and we know that the Iranians have been incrementally violating this deal. They've exceeded heavy water caps. Heavy water is the essential ingredient you need for a plutonium bomb. They're, they're testing more advanced centrifuges than they are permitted under the nuclear agreement. They've been illicitly procuring nuclear and ballistic missile technology in Germany, according to German intelligence services. And they've exceeded their enrichment cap. So the fact of the matter is there are violations. They're not material breaches. They're incremental violations. The president should state that, certify that, and say Iran is not in full compliance. Now, the second step is to say whether it's a material okay. breach. And it's not. It's not a material breach, and he should move ahead with a maximum pressure campaign. Mark Dubowitz, I'm sorry we're out of time. Mark Dubowitz, Rob Malley, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you, Thank gentlemen. You. Thanks so much.